It was down about 20 cents at one point. Interesting though, because then throughout the day, it kept creeping back up there. Now actually 15 cents up. Uh, Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcadia Economics on another action-packed day in the financial markets. Today on Monday, October 4th of 2021, where things are kicking up with the debt ceiling. Man, it sure seems like some people are nervous out there, including the president. We'll see how cool hand Luke Mitch McConnell will handle the banter back and forth, but a lot going on. And let us dig in because we have silver to cover. We have a lot of news to get in there. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Silver Viper for bringing us today's video. Silver Viper over in Sonora, Mexico, not too far from where I'm at down here in Sayulita. And uh, Silver Viper, one of the companies that I've been happy to get to know. Uh, I want you guys to know I'm very selective about who I allowed to come on here. Certainly there was a point where we we're giving a lot of the companies a chance to just come on and, you know, let, at least this way there is some video where you could see what you thought of the management and uh, quite proud of the ones that we've taken as our long-term partners, including Silver Viper. So thank you to Steve Cope and Silver Viper. I'll have a note on them later, but let us dig into the silver price. Quite an interesting 24 hours. Here you see the open on Sunday night. Silver spikes up. You know, I'm getting your hopes up a little bit and then comes down, trades down. I wake up to go to the bathroom and three or four in the morning, maybe checked my phone to see the silver price. It was down about 20 cents at one point. Interesting though, because then throughout the day, it kept creeping back up there. Now actually 15 cents up. Uh, does that mean anything uh, in the long term? Probably not. Just interesting to see it recover as quickly as it did. Usually when something like that happens, it goes up and gets pounded lower. Um, you might have expected to see the 45 cent plummet, which did not occur today. So we will see what is happening. Uh, I don't know if I have anything substantial or uh proof wise to report but gee it sure feels like a lot of people are nervous in a lot of places uh we'll cover the latest news with the evergrand which was halted in asia last night so um energy crises going on margin calls and uh, anyway silver hung in there today can see the uh, U.S. 10-year Treasury still a bit lower than that 155. Uh, maybe even gotten up to 156 last week, up a basis point from wherever they're marking that coming out of Friday. And uh, as you see, gold headlines: gold slips as dollar stems decline, but clings above 1750. <laughs> Talks like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, markets in the U.S. down. Nasdaq down about two percent there today. And for good reason, Facebook is suffering its worst outage since 2008. Shares drop almost 5% after the outage uh, and the whistleblower interview. There was a whistleblower speaking about 60 Minutes, uh, uh, speaking about Facebook on 60 Minutes last night. I just watched that. Um, now, compared to when you're covering Ross Benham and the CFTC, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, it didn't seem quite as exciting, but it seems like something's happening because as we will actually we can hop forward to now as we see here if at least this is 4 18 p.m central time on monday if you go to facebook.com i'm still getting can't find server then i just just saw this interesting tweet from craig hemke of tf metals well this is interesting Someone deleted large sections of the routing. That doesn't mean Facebook is just down. From the looks of it, that means Facebook is gone. Now, obviously, I don't have the coding background to tell you which of the two it is, but just that someone that the Academy at Benjamin Enfield. So you check with him. Craig Hemke shared it and uh, we will see. But is interesting timing. See the site down. I don't... The company certainly as big as Facebook. You would think they would have some people to get that back online. 
but it is one night after that whistleblower uh thing on facebook employee badges reportedly not working facebook appears to have more than dns issues uh, was just on the phone with someone who works for Facebook who described employees unable to enter the building. And uh, it's been several hours. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, all still down. Although, interestingly, Twitter is still going on. So I guess we will see what happens there. Certainly a lot of unusual things happening now, which we will get back to. Uh, exciting and I've been weaning myself off of CNBC. I know I have a little bit of an addiction here lately, although it's part of, I mean, you got to get behind the enemy lines from time to time and figure out what they're selling so you can understand what to watch out for. Um, this was an interesting one, which we will cover. Biden pushes Congress to raise debt ceiling limit this week, urging GOP to just get out of the way. Because if you're not going to support America, just get out of the way. Now, the problem, I wouldn't say problem, but at least my concern is that supporting America to me does not mean lodging our children and grandchildren further into debt. Because have you noticed throughout this entire debt ceiling debacle, no one's talked about cutting spending. It's not even part of the conversation. Instead, McConnell goads Biden over debt ceiling. Biden instead blames McConnell. Now, I don't want to get all mathematical and geeky here, but I see a pattern, a little bit of a circular. And uh, we'll see who who breaks first. Now, again, I know I'm critical of Country Joe, and I'm not really a big fan of Mitch either. I mean, I don't think that I would invite either of them to my uh, Silver Reset family barbecue. But nonetheless... I think it's interesting. They seem to be digging the heels in pretty good. This sure reminds me a lot of August of 2011, when I guess technically it was raised, although S&P downgraded them and gold ran 300 bucks. Now let's see. Gold ran 300 bucks over the next month now. Jeez, you would think solar would have to at least break 25, right? Come on. Go hit the option table, be back. Uh, here is interesting though, reporter says, uh, and actually let me uh, pull this back up so we can get the sound on this. Because I did listen to Joe Biden's chat this morning. It had a very bizarre feel to it. Uh, you're welcome to watch it if you want. Um, it felt desperate to me, especially a day after Gavin Newsom has a press conference asking for a trillion dollars and saying that the U.S. is in a depression, the unemployment's over 20%, which I would agree with that the governor of California is saying that and admitting it now. Um, and then today you have Joe Biden's press conference. And this was interesting. So let's play what we see here. Can you guarantee that the U.S. will not reach the debt ceiling, that that will not happen? No, I can't. That's up to Mitch McConnell. It's possible that the U.S. will not pay its debt. That is, that is I can't happen. believe that that will be the end result because the consequence is so dire. I don't believe that. But can I guarantee it? If I could, I would, but I can't. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. So some interesting comments from Joe there. Uh, I'm sure I'll be learning about this more over the next I would say weeks, although he's he put some seven day deadline in there. I wasn't quite clear on what that was about. He said over the next seven days, if you told me behind the scenes, that's really their internal deadline, whatever that represents. I mean, I think they're running out of money, have run out of money. I mean, they're cutting back, which isn't their style. Notice in that budget deal, which at one point was three and a half trillion, making it seem ironclad. Now they're talking about one and a half trillion, two trillion. So you can see the tapering in effect, whether it's the Fed actually doing it, whoever's not buying those bonds. But either case, uh, doesn't sound like this is going well. And one of the things that stood out to me, can you guarantee the U.S. will not reach the debt ceiling? No, I can't. That's up to Mitch McConnell. <laughs> you know, certainly as someone who did not quite know how to spell leadership at an early age and is at least in school trying to learn these things. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of assuming there is no out there, out there, you know, this didn't happen because Joe did it or Frank did it, you know, taking accountability for my own actions. 
So certainly when the president says, no, I can't, that's up to Mitch McConnell. I'm not sure I would agree. I mean, the leader is supposed to bring all these people together. I'm not saying Mitch McConnell is necessarily making that easy, although there is a part of me that's rooting for him. Anything to blow up this Ponzi scheme, I'm on board with these days. Anything within legal or moral and all that stuff. Um, now, my understanding is that either the Democrats or the Republicans could get the deal done on their own but not perhaps in the way they would want it with whatever other stuff that they want to string in there and take out the back door. I cannot confirm that's 100% accurate, although I believe that is the case. And uh, I'm sure I'll be learning plenty about that. Um, but if you don't want to help save the country, get out of the way, Biden said. So hopefully I'm not in the way. The Q&A, Biden was asked about the McConnell letter, which he said he saw just before walking out to speak. <laughs> Plans on talking to Mitch about it. He and I have been down this road before. Hope we can have some honest conversation about what he's proposing. Uh, this is the first time in recent history that a government shutdown has been possible when one party, one party has controlled the White House and Senate, White House, House and Senate. The Republicans own that. That was from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, let's be clear. Congress is facing another stopgap spending bill because of stuff that I really wouldn't trust her opinion on anyway. So we will leave that at that. Just a quick reminder from six uh, former Treasury secretaries, including Hank Goldberg, uh, Goldman Paulson, uh, just in their opinion, even delaying resolution until default is imminent can be detrimental. So maybe that's what the markets were responding to today, why Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan announced that he's already doing uh, you know, crisis scenario, uh, you know, dry practice runs with good understanding, because in the face of all of that, here's Fed Vice Chair Clarita. What's Clarita's first name? Do we have a first name for Clarita? It's Richard Dick. <laughs> what a dick. He front ran the entire fucking world so he could make a couple extra bucks one day before Powell emergency pandemic statement. Now, let me be careful with my language. I don't know that he's a complete dick who front ran the entire world just so he could make a couple extra bucks because I don't have full evidence. <clears throat> I want to behave myself, but <clears throat> given that he hangs out with Rosengren, Kaplan, and Jerome Powell, and let's be clear, I did see at least one article. I don't know if that's exactly how it went down. That suggests that Jerome himself was buying real estate investment trusts and other things that would have profited directly from that policy. Um, and it seems at least there's some people concerned that Dick Clarita could have run into the same uh, circumstance as well. So interesting to see all of these things coming out at the same time now, whether it's Facebook, Dick, Joe, Mitch, or any of these things that are going on here. You know, individually, they would seem worthwhile or shocking. Uh, and while we urge readers to go over Clarita's entire asset and income statement, can't help but know two things. Uh, cash is anything but trash. So you get the records here. So all these things are just happening at the same time, which could be a random coincidence. <clears throat> Although I would assert it's possible this could be what we've discussed on the show before, myself and some of the other guests, that at some point when you have people who are unhealthy, I mean, I my heart on some level goes out to people like Clarita, who, if guilty as alleged, would have done some really horrific things. I mean, these people, I think, are unwell. You know, they're not mentally healthy to be able to behave like that. But um, it seems like they're turning on each other. Okay, that one was long-winded, I'll admit it. But <laughs> that's the feeling I get. Seems like these guys are turning on each other because then we see, all right, well, this guy's under investigation. Now, Warren, Elizabeth Warren, urged the Securities and Exchange Commission to investigate whether the three Federal Reserve leaders violated insider trading rules. She called on SEC's <laughs> chairman, Gary Gensler, to look into those ethically questionable transactions. Although the only thing is that who is going to investigate Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler, especially since Gary Gensler's own ethically questionable track record 
where he overlooked silver manipulation as well as Senator Elizabeth Warren that I believe a lot of people sent the information to her as well, showing her the evidence of that bank she despises so much. The despicable Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan who said, give me a fine, our bank can pay it. So hopefully someone will be tight all over Gary Gensler because uh, I have not written up a file and submitted it to the CFTC's TPS whistleblower report line just yet because they don't really seem to respond to those all that much. <clears throat> but someone might want to check in on Gary. I'm not sure that I would feel too comfortable giving him the keys to the castle, but that is just me. Especially because in this COVID pandemic, pandemic era where the Fed governors are front running their own policies, I wonder if any uh, cashish went out the back door on this one because our legal challenge is next for Alabama's prison plan using COVID-19 relief dollars Say it ain't so. I hope Governor Kay Ivey didn't quickly sign bills that proposed using $400 million in COVID relief money to build three new prisons. I mean, with Anthony Fauci's lockdown that he's implemented while leaving a lot of unanswered questions already serving as its own form of prison, you would have thought that any money that was being deemed complete emergency from the same Federal Reserve governors who printed it <clears throat> and front ran it. Or actually, no, no, let's get the sequential order right. They first placed their trades, then they destroyed the nation's currency, launching us into this final leg of hyperinflation so they could push the asset markets seemingly, allegedly, in the direction of the trades that they had front ran before said policy, supposedly to save people who are already feeling a little bit locked up at home. I heard suicide rates are up. And I know that's serious. And I'm sure this must be a typo because no governor would then just take this money and spend $400 million to lock more people up while government people and officials are having parties where they're not wearing masks, where they're rubbing it in their face, how they're not wearing masks, and then how in places like Australia and Canada in particular, but now increasingly in the United States, they're using financial leverage, for threatening to fire people from their jobs or even outright put a syringe in them. In Australia, it looks pretty grim, where they're even like strapping kids down. They say the parents can't be, they have to be vaccinated, yet the people who are making the policies, not only aren't they often wearing masks, they're, they're taking the money out the back door. I hope that there is no uh, inappropriate action there. Although, this is interesting, House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler sent a letter to Janet Secretary to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. I mean, if there's anyone who's going to be all over this, it's her asking her to take all appropriate steps to prevent the misuse of funds by Alabama and the other states. Well, I certainly appreciate Jerry for doing that because another great reason to hit the subscribe button, as well as the notification bell, is that shortly this week I will have an update about the trillion dollar platinum coin. Um, proposal, which Jerry Nadler is apparently a big supporter of. Um, I don't know if he owns a lot of platinum or maybe he built, he wants that prison built as a platinum vault for himself. Who knows? But he does advocate the trillion dollar platinum coin as a means of resolving the debt ceiling standoff. I don't know if that was in the postscript of his letter to Janet Yellen. But uh, again, like I said, that's why if you hit the notification bell after the subscription button, you can stay posted. So as long as your phone still works, you remember to check in from time to time, or even better yet, there's a way you can get it even more easily than that, which we'll skip to now, because here on the Arcadia Economics home site, you just go put your email and your name right in there and get these, you get these babies delivered via email, electronic silver box, boom, it's right there. That's how it goes. So that is an option to consider. And also the reason I happen to have this page pulled up, I don't mention this too often, and I'm not sure what happened to our pictures there, but the Big Silver Short, a book explaining how all of these events, in fact, I would like to think the book did explain a lot of these events that are unraveling, basically why you see Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden being one and a half stooges each for a combined full three, as the debt ceiling comes and not really much has been solved over the past decade since 2011. This was all very predictable as 15 of the experts that I was fortunate to interview in this book detailed quite eloquently 
And on top of it, the last piece of the puzzle, I'd hope maybe that would happen sooner where the silver price would start accelerating, but I guess that's been a blessing, giving more time to prepare in advance of what I believe uh, more than ever will be a substantial move. I was actually buying a lot of silver option, silver miner call options this morning, as silly and non-financially advised as that might be. But that's the kind of thing that people who study the silver market after having an option, having an option trading background are prone to do while the U.S. is in the process of officially embarrassing itself on a global spectrum. Although, fortunately, I think the bad guys are getting themselves right out front so they can be held accountable and arrested from doing further damage to themselves or others so that we can rebuild an honest nation that I would be feel proud to return back to. Anyway, when you're going to see that all unravel in the silver market, how that's going to happen, you can come and get a copy of the big silver short. Um, so at least this way you can know before it goes down. You don't want to read about the housing bubble after it implodes. I mean, the big short was a good movie, but what if you had seen it before it had happened? At least the book is available. I am editing the movie and iMovie as we speak, so we'll see how that goes. Also on a special note, market is unprepared for the inflation fallout, warns even Wharton Zone Jeremy Siegel. Wow, this brings back some memories because it was, let's call it the spring of 2004 semester. Remember it was in his office hours. This was back in my misguided Wharton uh, MBA days. And he mentioned that he was being considered as one of the possible candidates to succeed Alan Print-em-Up Greenspan. Did not happen. He actually would have fit in perfectly, although they got Ben Bernanke to play the role just as efficiently. Yet even stocks for the long run, Jeremy Siegel says we're headed for some trouble ahead. Inflation in general is going to be a much bigger problem than the Fed believes. So even the hardcore stock bulls now pointing out the obvious. Again, that theme was also discussed two years ago or whenever this book was a year and a half ago. Uh, I think it started recording the audios in January of 2019. So, geez. Wow. Yeah, I think that's right. So almost three years since uh, that started. Uh, anyway, I like it. I've been reading and listening to it again myself lately. And it's funny just as you learn and understand more and more pieces of the puzzle are removed. Uh, takes on different context. I like listening to things more than once. I guess that's what we do when we study. But uh, anyway, I found it helpful, many others as well. So if you'd like to get a copy, also available on Amazon or uh, it's the uh, audible.com. So anyway, but some big breaking news before we wrap this one out. Today, the CFTC kicks off World Investor Week 2021. The CFTC is proud to participate in this week's events to help customers spot and avoid fraud. So I think they've actually done a good job. Bart Chilton was uh, doing some yeoman's work there. Now, hopefully they will have a follow-up effort of what you do after you've spotted and avoided the fraud and reported it to Acting Commissioner Rosty the Boss Benham who, let's take a look here. I was actually looking for him first. I'm such a big fan. But it looks like Ross, uh, he retweeted his appreciation of National Hispanic Heritage Month uh, back on September 15th, which is almost over. Uh, but other than that, September 3rd, he's on board with Labor Day. Uh, but not too much from Ross the Boss. Maybe he's finishing up the silver investigation. We shall see. Um, on to other news that <laughs> now this is coming from Reuters, so you might want to double check the math, but at least reporting India's September gold imports surge as prices correct ahead of festival. I would say this is more of a surge. This seemed like a rush to the exits out of fiat currencies, that is, because India's gold imports in September soared 658% from last year's lower base. There's a correction in local prices. That's what it was. In either case, India imported 91 tons of gold in September compared to 12 tons a year earlier. And uh, that, that's a big chunk right there. Sources said on Monday on condition of anonymity as he is not authorized to speak to the media. Well, there you go. <laughs> so Reuters is at least quoting a source who 
if accurate, would have violated his oath. So take that as it will. Uh, thanks, Reuters, as always, but at least reporting that India has bought a lot more gold. Uh, quick one, big trade hidden underneath the surface. This was on Zero Hedge. Interesting for you options fans out there. It's a bit technical, but if you trade options or like hearing how JP Morgan has been piling on risk through one of their uh, money management wings, uh, pretty interesting read. So there is that. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, shares in embattled China Evergrande halted last night, I believe it was, in Hong Kong. Trading in shares of heavily indebted Evergrande suspended on Monday, days after some bondholders said the property developer at the center of jitters over China's financial system had missed a second key bond interest payment. Uh, just a warning, if you read any stories on CNBC about this, they're usually telling you something that's a couple of days or a week or so old. Uh, I've not heard anyone indicate any scenario in which this is a good situation financially. Um, seems kind of lemonish to me. We shall see. I know there's been a lot of things in the past decade that have felt that way, and the Fed patches it up, although keep in mind their uh, repo amounts are growing rapidly. This was interesting. The same day that Tesla was up a percent or two, Stock in its electric vehicle unit, China Evergrande new energy vehicle fell as much as 8%. So who knows what's going on there. Also, it was interesting to see one of the automakers up quite a bit this morning, especially after Friday, they announced that due to the chip shortages, they were cutting about 30% of their production. And here, really putting it into perspective, uh, Global airline industry is expected to cut losses in 2022 by 78% to $12 billion. So what the heck are they going to be in 2021? Airlines will have lost more than $200 billion from the COVID pandemic through next year. And this is what Jerome Powell and Joe Biden are selling to you as a healthy economy. Net losses in 2020 were $137 billion. Uh, more than earlier estimates. Um, so let's take the next round of estimates with a grain of salt. Uh, and uh, there you go. <laughs> Jim Cramer was, I uh, watched a video with him today talking about the new, uh, new Merck COVID pill. <laughs> Here it might take care of your birth control permanently. So be careful on that one, uh, or at least take a lot of vitamin D as I hear it. Or I don't know if you should take vitamin D. Not trying to belittle these things. Uh, I would not take anything out of any of these companies. Oh, and we got breaking news as this is wrapping this one up. Office of Inspector General to review whether Fed officials' trading activity broke ethics, rules, or laws. Huh. This is breaking news. So it seems like the rats are fleeing each other because how about this? Even the witch of the IMF. The board to grill investigators George Ava on data rigging claims this week. Uh-oh. This woman, I don't get a good feel from her myself. I haven't met her, but hey, she works from the IMF and I don't play ball in their league. Um, executive board will intensify its probe of managing director Kristalina Georgieva this week by separately interviewing her and investigators who said she pressured World Bank staff to alter dates to favor China. She was also selling those SDRs pretty hard, uh, the merits of them, and who knows where that, uh, I believe $650 billion went on, uh, what was that, September 2nd or August uh, 23rd, maybe, uh, it was about a month or so ago. Uh, and now she is under investigation. So it seems like a lot of people turning on each other quickly. And uh, this last one we already covered. So with that said, um, oh, actually, I do know what I wanted to say right before we wrap up here. Um, besides the fact that I think we're getting increasingly close to seeing some movement in the silver price. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but Gee, it feels like we're getting here. And also, yes, from Steve Vipe, uh, Steve Cope, Silver Viper, they are doing a call tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific for the Red Cloud live webinar. 
Steve Cope will be there and uh, you can go to the Silver Viper Twitter page to find out more about that. So that is today's Silver News. Hope you are doing well out there. Thanks as always for joining me. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because I I know we will have some more exciting footage coming tomorrow. There's already some J.B. Morgan legal updates I hope to have ready as well as God only knows what happens next in our financial world. But looks like things are on track for silver investors and I will see you again soon.